Mesoamerica's geography. To better understand the Olmec culture that figured out the very complex chocolate making process, we need to get a handle on the geographic regions they inhabited and figure out how the cacao tree actually made it to those regions. Scientists agree that the Obroma cacao originally grew wild in South America, specifically in the Amazon basin, probably in its northwest part, which is modern-day Ecuador. There is no evidence that we know of at this point in time to suggest that pre-Columbian civilizations from South America used cacao to make chocolate. Likely, the people enjoyed the sweet pulp that envelops the cacao beans as a food source. Scientists also don't know if wild cacao grew further north up through Mesoamerica on its own or if it was traded by ancient cultures. There is some evidence that the South American cultures of the Pacific traded with the Mesoamerican cultures because oyster shells that come from the Pacific coast have been found in Mesoamerica. To sum it up, we know cacao grows wild in South America. What we don't know is whether the cacao tree was spread by human trade, if it is indigenous to Mesoamerica, or if it made its way north some other way. I keep speaking of Mesoamerica, but I haven't defined geographically where Mesoamerica is. Well, Meso means middle, so technically Mesoamerica is Central America and the southern part of Mexico. For now, we are going to focus on the southern part of Mexico because not only is that where we have the oldest evidence of cacao being used to make chocolate, but it is also where the Europeans encountered the dominant cultures of the Colombian period, and thus where we get most of our evidence and information about Mesoamerican culture and history. Let's start with a blank map of Mexico. Just to give you a modern point of reference, to the north is the USA, and on the southern border there are two countries, Belize and Guatemala. We will talk more about Belize and Guatemala later, as they contain some of the larger urban areas of the Mayan civilization. To the east is the Gulf of Mexico, and to the west is the Pacific Ocean. The peninsula on the eastern side of Mexico is called the Yucatan. This will also be an important geographical region later when the Mayan come on to the Mesoamerican scene. Looking at the physical layout of a country can tell us a lot about why civilizations chose to settle in certain areas. In order for civilizations to flourish, they need three things. Access to food or the ability to grow food, fresh water, and either weather elements that aren't that extreme or a means to protect themselves against the elements if they are extreme. So what does Mexico have in terms of physical geography and climate? Well, it's a pretty mountainous area with three big mountain ranges, the Sierra Madre Occidental, Sierra Madre Oriental, and the Sierra Madre del Sur. Lucky for us, these are easy to remember, especially if you know a little Latin. Occidental means, and this is a very loose translation, falling sun, and oriental means rising sun. Since the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, occidental refers to the west and oriental refers to the east. Now you know why Asian countries are sometimes referred to as oriental, because they are in the orient or the east. Sur means south. Sierra means mountain, and Madre means mother. So the mountain ranges in Mexico are called the Mother Mountains, and the Occidental, Oriental, and Sur, depending on the direction they are in relation to one another. There is also one other set of mountains that are scattered between the Pacific and Gulf of Mexico, called the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt. If you are interested in plate tectonics and volcanoes, then this is a really cool volcanic belt to study. But sadly, we don't have the time to delve into that here. Let's just say Mexico City is really close to a very active volcano. Between the mountain ranges is the Mexican or Central Plateau. In case you don't know, a plateau is an elevated plain like this. Most of the central plateau in Mexico is arid to semi-arid and comprised of deserts and xeric shrublands. The word arid comes from the Latin root aridus, which means dry. So for the most part, the central plateau is dry or mostly dry. There are some exceptions, like the Valley of Mexico, which is surrounded by mountains. 
some of which are volcanoes of the Trans-Mexican Belt. This area is not dry because the precipitation that accumulates in the mountains drains into the valley. This is where modern-day Mexico City is located. We will learn more about the geography of Mexico City and how it has changed over time when we study the Aztecs and the Columbian Exchange. Mexico also has a couple of large deserts. The Sonoran Desert, located in the modern-day states of Sonora and Baja, and the Chihuahua Desert, located in Chihuahua. The area between the Sierra Madre Oriental and the Gulf Coast are the modern-day Mexican states Veracruz and Tabasco. By way of more than 40 rivers and tributaries, the Sierra Madre Oriental and the Mexican Volcanic Belt, or Sierra Nevada as it's also known, drain into the Gulf Coast, leaving this region lush and highly vegetative. And it is this lush tropical forest, perfect for growing cacao trees, where archaeological evidence suggests the mother civilization of Mesoamerica, known as the Olmec, first put down its roots.